Hello, everyone, and welcome to Human Humane Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii. I am this program's co-host, Soto Brown. I'm the Bishop Museum Historian. And we're going to be joined in just a second by Martin Despang, this program's host, who's being, going to be speaking to us direct from Germany. But in the meantime, if you look in the back of me, there's a fist fight going on there. Violent fist fight, what is that all about? Well, Martin, join us and tell us what the fist fight is about in the background. Well, it's that I'm going to look forward to another crime, prime, time TV <laughs> evening together, playing pretty much in our capitals of our tropical exotic Honolulu, Hawaii, and Munich, Germany. Yes. If we can get the first slide up, that will explain more. As we were talking in the last show, uh, both Magnum PI and uh, Hawaii Five O are rebooted here at the studios. One at your front yard in Diamond Head, and the other one out there at Barber's Point. But in fact, as this slide here shows, uh, both Honolulu and uh, Munich are actually one of the safest cities in uh, in our cultures in our country. So they're kind of making this up, right? Yes. So let's go to the next slide. We want to quickly fly over an update here on the, uh, a crime show that is playing uh, here, one town over in Rosenheim, which is uh, towards the Alps, just a few miles here. And um, as the two top right slides reference that in Hawaii 5 architecture, especially in the original from the 60s, architecture has played a very active actor role. And we're very happy to see, have seen at the Sunset at the Beach, the season premiere uh, last uh, summer, that they're continuing that because the Kahala Hilton was a major actor. So we're happy to see that. Um, next slide. Uh, our, our office home has been an actor in one of the Rosenheim Cops uh, features. And so now we have uh, been in there again. And uh, these are the next slides you're going to see. Every other slide is going to be like this one, a screenshot from the show, and then every other one is going to be a picture that our photographer did. But when we talked yesterday, what did you, did you get out of this image here? What, what do we see to sell? And uh, there's your German, your daily German word. Yes, my, da my daily German word. Well, what we see here is traditional Bavarian architecture, as you pointed out, which is a stucco wall with a wooden framework, the red geraniums in the, in the window boxes, and the man in the picture, who's one of the actors in the Rosenheim Cops show, is wearing what you pointed out is a traditional Bavarian jacket, which is called a young cow. I did it right. Very well said. Yeah, Very well. thank and you. And that gentleman is the, is the inspector, and he has to stay warm in winter. And it's, by the way, it's still chilly here. And you told me in Denver, too, they had graduation and throwing, <laughs> making a snowball snow fight. Yes. So, so architecture and people have to stay warm and be sort of heavily dressed, right? Right. So it's wall architecture and young cow fashion people. That's right. Next slide. Um, while uh, last time it was the office home, uh, this time it was the uh, private residence of our business partner, Isabel Schlippmann. And here you can see one of the suspects uh, in, in, in that building. Next slide. Uh, and, and here, again, here are the pictures by a photographer um, where you can see the architecture is pretty clean, uh, clean lights. It's more about space uh, than anything else, uh, framed views. And only the uh, inherited uh, family furniture here is, is nostalgic, is historic, is, is sentimental, if you will, so about the good old times, but the architecture is not. The architecture is a modern interpretation of the legacy of the culture. Next picture, um, we, again, if, if you want to know more about, we don't have time, we want to spend more time in Honolulu today, but if you want to know more about the building, you watch uh, a show from the previous uh, show, Urban Transcendence, where I was sent out my very first summer to be a one-man band uh, show man, and, and so I, I portrayed the, the building, so you can look into that. So let's just jump quickly over the next sequence of slides here. Next one, here's the main living room. Next phase, uh, next, uh, next slide. Uh, the inspector here in front of the stairs. Next slide, that we were using cable instead of anything else to keep it the most clean and dematerialized. Next slide. Uh, here, uh, the investigation going on in that living room. 
uh, you were asking uh, what are they doing to prepping for shows quite a lot. They were like cleaning out, switching out stuff. That table wasn't in there originally. Then Isabel decided to keep it in. They <laughs> caused some damage. There's a lot of there's a lot going on. You know, it's, it's quite the undertaking. Next slide here. Um, this is this is the living room facing south. You got that cut out one eye, which is uh, shading the glass front. Next slide. Um, Again, the, the kitchen is an open kitchen in the back. They didn't walk up, so I threw in a couple of images from my previous show where I will walk you up, where I walked you up, and if you want to watch it again, I walk you up. Next slide. Um, and this is one from upstairs. Again, materials left pure, uh, raw, put in place, a board from concrete. Uh, window frames out of wood, and then again, the, the old historic furniture nicely sort of being staged uh, in that sort of, you know, wide open, clean space. Next picture. Um, on the exterior, it's been some years since it's been built, so it's been aging. The wood is left untreated. Next slide. You can see how it looked uh, original. This is heat-treated uh, uh, poplar wood. That pool has some uh, evaporative cooling effect in the summer times because hopefully we will get summer soon. <laughs> please, please. Next slide. Uh, here is uh, detailing again of the of the of the heavy threshold, the facade, and the structure, and the insulation. And there is a rain screen again, thermally modified timber. We uh, continue to suggest for Hawaii as well. We call it the new Hawaii woods. There's a show about that with Patrick Donahue at the very top right. Next slide. And this is how it looks when it's cold. We don't have snow anymore, but it could be snowy because I think it's one degree below freezing. So if there would be humidity, it could, fr it could freeze again in mid-May. This is sort of global cooling, as our current president foolishly would say. Of course, it's related to global warming. It's either hot, damn hot, or freaking cold. Here, the north facade and the east facade kept very close to not lose heat, to minimize the openings. Next slide. And, and again, this is obviously what we like to talk about. We suggest for any kind of culture, and Hawaiian culture in particular, is the evolution of the tradition of the vernacular and not the mimicking. So um, next slide. And location is very important. I have to say our project is uh, in the outskirts of Munich. So it's sort of in the burbs. You can compare it to maybe Couple A. And one thing that's similar, there's a light rail uh, station that's been here for a while and that makes it so attractive, especially for younger families who in this uh, equally uh, gentrification problem that we have here, same as in Honolulu, can't make a living anymore and buy a home with their kids to have a little bit of lawn, and so they move out and they buy out the land here. And, and we'll probably talk about that in a couple of shows because this is one of the sort of bitter pills I have to swallow here during my sabbatical because we're currently, and you know, for the last half year and continue three more months, we do an even more than we already do cosmopolitan uh, cultural correspondence um, communication, me being here in my native Germany. So uh, while, you know, this is a, is a suburban community or, or in the outskirts, all the infrastructure is here. So from a sustainability point of view, it's not quite as bad. However, what it's lacking um, desperately is, is density. So uh, we make a cut here and I pass it on to you with the next slide because we're going back home to our crime capital, Honolulu. And uh, from here on, I let you talk about a project that has recently been featured in the rebooting of Magnum PI that we see popping up all over the place. And we reference Upride, uh, tropical tourism expert Suzanne here looking over the guardrail of our classical mid-century piece of Waikiki Grand that we reside in and seeing them filming uh, outside of the doors. So which new member to the actors team of architecture, uh, are we welcoming to Honolulu, to Soto? We are welcoming the Haoli Lofts building. This is a brand new building which opened, I believe, last year. 
And in this view, which is looking down like a Google view, you can see where the Haoli lofts are located. They're on Haoli Street, thus the name of the building. They are in the Macaulay Mo'ili'ili district, and that's bisected by Macaulay Street, which has commercial buildings along it. And this particular neighborhood is a remnant of older Honolulu, where there are a lot of single family homes. If you look at these roof lines, you can see that there are a lot of small buildings, but there are apartment buildings, and it's a place that is probably going to see a lot more redevelopment and high rises as we continue through our city's evolution. And why don't we go to our next picture? And now we're going to see, <laughs> there we are back with Magnum with the Alamoana building in the background and the old Magnum and on the top right, the new current Magnum from the Magnum PI show. Looking from the Haoli Lofts building, you can look at the high rises in the distance, but in the foreground, it's still low rise and there are trees there. One of the things is, there are big windows in this building, and that's a big feature of it. Let's go to the next photograph. So Yeah, and again, the, the same sequence, Basilda, right? We're going to see an alteration of uh, screenshots from the show, which was the last yep. picture, and this yes. here is provided by the architect, yes. so every other one. Yes. And this was provided by the architect, Ted Paul Studio, and we're going to introduce them more later. Yes. Uh, but, but here we see, we see what we can call a party shot or a the money shot done by a professional photographer disclosed so well because it's taken in the uh, sunset at sunset time. And sunset, uh, you know, happens to be a problem in Honolulu. If you're facing west, you're going to be bay. So the architect are introducing a biochromatic device that we at the very top left already uh, complimented on in the previous show when we were talking about. Uh, these things uh, pretty much, right? Right. And how, what, uh, how brief soleils can yes, and have to yes, shade yes, yes. buildings. Exactly. That, and that is something we've talked about before on this program. But you see these vertical ribs on the side of the building that we're looking at. That is not only a strong element of the way the building looks, which is decorative, if you want to say that, distinctive, but it also provides shade to that side of the building. And one thing we're going to talk about a little bit more is the exterior walkways and exterior stairways of the building. Now, I think this is a place where I can point out that when I first saw these pictures, I thought this was a mid-century building that had been rehabbed. And in fact, no, it is a brand new building, but for various reasons, it resembles those classic buildings of the middle 20th century. And I think we should go to our next picture. And mm -hmm. so when we look at this, we see, we're seeing the second story of an individual apartment unit. We'll talk about that more in a second, but they're all two stories. Looking out from this top mezzanine level, past where the woman is sitting at her easel because she's supposed to be a painter in this particular episode, you see those giant windows that we're looking through in the distance. But at the bottom of those windows are jealousies. They are not all fixed windows. And if you look at the top right, you'll see the show that I did with Don Hibbert here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii, uh, which was about jealousies and how popular they were during that mid-century period. Next picture. Yeah, and, and if, we re if we remember the, the Google side plan, the architect at Paul Studio put in something, and Bandit Kanistakon, who is one of the principals in the firm, is teaching uh, introductory courses at the University of Hawaii School of Architecture. So he teaches what he preaches, and he preaches what he teaches, and he practices what he teaches, and he teaches what he practices. So he put in the North Era in that plan. So this building is positioned because usually would say glue, glue, uh, big glass fronts are a no-go in the tropics. Well, they can be done if you orientate the real, the, them correctly, right. which is if you make them face north, yes. they won't overheat. And Correct. if you allow... Uh, cross ventilation. And we also, another thing that reminds you of mid century is that the type of this building is a single loaded corridor. Yes, so he brings is. back the luxury of this biochromatically per perfect typology, and with jealousies on both sides, you get the cross breeze. Right. And if you look at this particular view, you'll see the upper part of the window is fixed glass, but the lower part down where the people are is jealousy windows. You can adjust those, but you're also getting the air movement down where you are on the floor. So this is very clearly thought out, and, and there's a lot of, en there's a lot of uh, energy went, went into figuring out how to do this in the best way possible, which we'll see in a, just a second. 
Next picture. So there's our fist fight again. And the fist fight is going on in front of what looks like a solid concrete wall. It is a concrete wall, but unlike what you might think and what I assumed, this is not poured in place mold form formed concrete with rebar in it. In fact, this is recast concrete panels. And, and uh, Martin, tell us about the company that makes these and where it is. Yeah, the reference is on the top right here. We've done a couple of, um, you know, uh, references to very specific Rocky Mountain precast, who's out in Apple again at Campbell Industrial Park. The top notch uh, uh, architectural precast and prefabrication of, and that, that only makes sense because the difference is back in the days of glory mid century that we love so much, labor was relatively cheap. And the trail was, so you were able to afford, you know, high labor intense port in place concrete, not so much these days anymore. So if you want to be cost efficient and effective, which is building very much is at a pretty tight budget, you got to go to prefab to make it possible uh, to, to afford it. Go to the next slide. Here, Abundant and his business partner, Janice Lee, were providing these construction pictures here, and you can see how the big panels. They just got lifted from a truck, from a flatbed that was coming over H1 and trucking them out, put them on a crane and put them together like a house of cards, right? right. So this is the technology that it, was, that it was implementing. Again, this is an evolution of a tradition because concrete has been done quite a bit and masterfully, you know, IMP, the East West Center and many others. This is our local material. But again, we have to do it differently these days than we have done in the past. And along these lines, I think we can go to the next slide here because there's another element here that has a tradition, and these are tropical screens that That's we right. dedicated to the show right. so that you That's see right. at the very top right. Again, here, they were using an, a similar, and this building here is the, uh, what was it called on King Street? King Street Center, right? Right, Something like right. that. King Center. And the, the whole building is basically enclosed in the second skin of perforated metal. Mm -hmm. So Bundit and Janice were taking this as an inspiration and, and basically using it for the infill of the guardrail that right. you see here. Right. That you right. get a certain sort of uh, camouflaging of what's, you know, going on behind, but it's porous enough. Uh, to let the, the our natural AC, the trade winds go through, right? So right. it's again, it's an evolution of tradition on the islands. And jumping to the next uh, picture here is showing the building on the right. That is uh, the north facing facade that we're talking about. And, and on the left picture is its side, one of the two sides. So um, we, again, the building is facing north. So you can make the big glass, uh, but these, these hallways, again, are, are serving multiple purposes because, first of all, they're giving access to the unit. But secondly, in the very early morning, in the very late afternoon, in the critical seasons, you get some sun on the north facade, which this picture shows. And then the overhangs help the shade, again. A very cleverly done, very essential approach, just doing the necessary and no more. So there's, you were saying yesterday, there's no decoration, there's no ornament, as you like to mm -hmm, say, on the mm -hmm. building. It's all performative. So that right. way it's like nature, right. which is all performative, but it's very appealing uh, because it works so well, Correct. as we like to you know, think and I think, about, And right? this is a good place to point out, too. There's a very important thing that Bundit told me, which is that the walkways and the stairways are cantilevered off of the building. And legally, or by, by code, this means they're not, pound, they're not counted as part of the building mass. This allowed the interiors of the apartments to be larger because they could occupy more of that site, if you will. So not only does this look nice, but it also means that the apartments, the units themselves, are bigger and more accommodating for the people who live in them. Clever, clever. And yeah. next picture along the same lines here of sort of celebrating a very utilitarian thing. We're pointing out in the show that we referenced at the top right that tropical circulation, so exterior egress staircases, has been a mid-century feature. And that's another thing that probably reminds you of these good old Absolutely, days. Absolutely, yes. And Bundit and Janice were re-celebrating that, the circulation here. And, you know, it's great to see pop culture, Magnum P.I., 
sort of dwelling upon right. that. You right. see Jay Hernandez, the new Magnum, uh, chasing the suspect here, the painter, down these staircases. So they're obviously getting it. They're getting the how, how special that feature is, right. and they're portraying that. And, you know, pop culture is, 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 is you know, where you get the message to the mass. Absolutely. Right? We have a very sort of... We have a nice program, but you know we have to, we have some clicks. But compared to people who are in front of their TV, we're talking a much bigger audience. Yes, so we're that's right. very very happy to see good architecture yes. refeatured again in, in pop cultural media. Right, right. Uh, go to the next slide. This is the other side. This is the southern facade here. This is pounded by the sun all day. This is why they. The opposite of what we do in Germany, where we have to, to keep the north and the east very close because we're a temperate climate, which is very moody. And here, we're year-round, we're rather the same. So here, you got to keep that close. you got to keep the opening minimal. And again, you got to have the jealousy so you can get the breeze through. And we see these little eyebrow things here, these ledges sticking out. And, and they help to shade, and they help to light our eyebrows to channel the water if we're under the shower so we don't get the water in the eyes. That's so right. It's a similar thing, you know, it's how bodies work. Mm -hmm. It's about skins, and this is very cleverly interpreted here in the architecture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we want to share um, a little bit the methodology of how the, the architects are working, and that gets us to the next slide here. We see a diagram, yeah. and this is what Bunnett is teaching his students so well. Again. Uh, you know, upfront biochromatic uh, essence into the design process. Do it based the the nature of your design on it. Then it will be integral to the design and yeah. doesn't have to be applied. It Correct. doesn't have to be licked and sticked on Correct. some leaf things. You know, here it's inherent in the substance of the architecture. You see sun studies here. You see wind studies, and that's what it's all about. Right. And very well deserved, we can say, and we show in the next couple of slides how well received uh, the project was in literature, yeah. uh, local magazines. Next slide here is the Hawaii home and remodeling. And we see that space that we were talking about. And again, they were putting in, uh, you know, quite modern furniture and, and mid-century furniture in there because that's what the spirit of the building continues to be. Right. right? And you know, the other thing that I think we want to talk about, and I think let's go to the next slide from this one, is first of all, each one of these units is two stories. So the height of the building could be that perhaps of a six story building, but it actually only has three floors because every unit has got this large grand interior space. They also had custom metal work done for the railings of the interior stairways, as well as the exterior, which we were talking about, that porous metal. And as, as Martin just said, these stripped down austere interiors look really nice with modern furniture. But of course, as you saw in the first pictures, you could put traditional furniture in these as well. Uh, next picture. So here you can clearly see the two levels. That upper level is kind of a mezzanine because it's open and it has a bedroom, has a bathroom. These are rather large units. They have three bedrooms and two bathrooms each. They are mid-range in price. Now, that means in Honolulu that they're up around a million dollars, which is not necessarily inexpensive, but they certainly are not luxury apartments like we're seeing being built in Kaka'ako right now. And there was a lot of thought put into fitting all of this onto the ground space that they had in this particular, at this site, not only in the ways that you saw with the, sunny, the sun studies, and the air movement studies, but also how to situate the building, how to make the most use out of the property as it stood and as they had to work with. Next picture. And they've also got other amenities in this building. There is this, uh, there's this uh, lanai that is common for everybody to use. And again, only nine units, so there aren't a lot of people here. But also there is a photovoltaic uh, power that's being generated that is distributed to all the apartments. And also, each one of the apartment's parking spaces is set up to accommodate electric car recharging if the tenant wants it. So they were very careful to be thinking ahead and to be, as, as Martin has said, as lead as possible, as energy efficient as possible. Next. And this is the, the apartment, the building as we see it. This is, as, uh, as you can see, how it is all set up to make it clear that each one of those floors accommodates what would normally be two floors,
but is actually very big, tall apartments with a, with a loft and a ground floor. The parking is underneath, and they also gave a lot of thought to the views. What can you see through all these big windows that they had put in on the north side of the building, which is also facing the trade winds? So that's where we've got the jealousies that are the main bank of jealousies that will allow air movement through. Mm -hmm. These apartments don't come with AC. You would have to install it yourself if you wanted to. Unlike with most buildings that have central air conditioning, these specifically were set up not to do that so that people could mm -hmm. just rely on natural ventilation if they wanted. Uh, next picture. Yeah. And, and we're, we're on that diagram, right? On the okay, no, we just, I'm sorry, we just diagram. went back. Yeah, you want to go back to the diagram? There we are again. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Because again, I want to commend my colleagues here about collapsing everything that the building is and needs into this one beautiful drawing here. It's a section perspective, shows everything you talked about. It's all integrative. And so it's just like with nature, you know, it looks like, okay, wow, it works. And then you can start to think about its components and its systems. But again, it's, it's all integrated. And, uh, um, and, and it's a natural organism, just like nature is. Right. And, and here you can see that the, there are people in there. So the, the, it's all designed around the, the human being as the actor, again, mm -hmm. in, in, in the sort of scene of everyday life. Yeah. And if you go to the next slide here, where does this all come from? Um, you know, Bundant and, and Janice are, are great, uh, well-educated uh, uh, people who have been studying all over the world. Uh, they come from different cultural backgrounds, uh, from, um, from Thailand and, and from Hong Kong, and they have studied in Harvard and all these things. But they're very, because of that, they're very down-to-earth people and there's no bullshit in their thinking and making. And they like to, uh, you know, suggest things that they have experienced themselves. And their main inspiration uh, for this project here isn't some superficial architectural theory, but it's their own experience in a building that has been built in Honolulu, not that far away from, from this new building here at the end of the mid-century era, mm -hmm. uh, the good era, in mm -hmm. 1970. And the architect, I like to say, it's my, my, my sort of bridge is John McLaughlin, but it's George McLaughlin. And since you're the local Hawaiian, what's the name of that uh, and, building? And again? the building is called Kahale Mo'i, which means the king's home. And it, too, has two-story apartments. And so the apartment that Janice and funded live-in was the inspiration for what they designed at the Haoli Lofts. And I think these pictures here show that original apartment that they live in. But if we go to the next picture, uh, there are Janice and Bundit in one of the units, and that's one of the units that they designed at uh, the Haoli Lofts. And so we're just about at the end of the program. Why don't we go to and, our... And not, not, for, not forgetting to, to mention their dog as their oh, other yes. partner. Absolutely you not. Know, I, and I, and in business and I, 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 Janice is patting their doggy, and I like that a lot as well. I'm a dog fan as well. Um, I think our exactly. next picture, what is our next picture? Well, there it, we are. It's our last one. We, we, it is. we want to phase out because we also want to use this show here as to congratulate uh, both of them uh, who have been active, devoted, uh, loyal members of the coaching team uh, of the Architectural Emerging Generation at UH School of Architecture for many decades, we can say now. And now, more than well-deserved, Abundant came on board more permanently. He just got appointed uh, assistant professor tenure track. So he will, you know, get a regular paycheck that's a l way more decent than sort of his uh, adjunct, uh, you know, donations that he got, which he can't make a living on. Because I have to say, again, we also should mention the developer Wei Feng here. Without a great client, without great architects, you cannot make a project like that, and you for sure won't make any money. He is reinvesting all his architectural fees into the building culture of this project here. So, again, he's been a great teacher, so the compensation for teaching uh, will help uh, him to continue to do such great projects. And I, I, I can't wait. And this slide here shows um, how excited I am to have him on board and to um, do things together. Uh, this here is the Courtyard Country Cabana, 
uh, CCC that we might want to collaborate on in, in the future with John Henderson. I'm very excited about that. And we want to close and extending uh, well wishes for his uh, uh, recovery to Richard Lowell, who is working hard to get back to health um, and keeping his happiness. And he's prepping to be back on the show in early July. And yes. I, I can't wait for that because he's such a rich source and an eyewitness from the glory days of mid-century yeah. that you are going to do another Doko Momo show, I think. Next yes, week. I am. And that brings us both to the end of the program. Thank you all very much for joining us for Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. I'm DeSoto Brown saying goodbye and see you again next time here on Think Tech. Aloha. Bye-bye.